Welcome back to Leo's Bag of Tricks, Learning Electronics. This is episode number four. In our last episode, we talked a lot about voltage sources, voltage dividers, and source impedance. These are really important concepts, so let's go back and take a look at this stuff again, but maybe from a slightly different point of view. Let's say we have a 10 volt battery, and we want to use this battery to create a 5 volt signal that we can send on to the next part of our circuit. Let's create a simple voltage divider to knock that voltage down to 5 volts. We're going to add two 10k ohm resistors in series to make a voltage divider. We'll tap off of the junction between the two resistors and send it to the outside world. With two equal resistors, the ratio is 50-50, so that means the voltage should be divided exactly in half. If we build this up on the breadboard and check it out, everything looks right. We measure 10 volts across the two resistors, and at the junction between the two, we get 5, just as we expect. So let's now repeat this experiment with two 10 mega ohm resistors. The same 50-50 ratio of resistance should give us the exact same division down to 5 volts. But look, when we measure, we're only getting 3.484 volts. What's wrong? Well, I can tell you the exact moment before we put the meter leads on that node, there was 5 volts there. Now what we failed to consider is the very high but still finite input impedance of the voltmeter. To measure anything, you've got to sample some of it. And that means it's got to draw a tiny amount of current from the voltage you're measuring. If we look carefully at the specification sheet for our Fluke voltmeter, we can see that the input impedance is listed as 10 mega ohms. When we measured those 10K resistors in the previous experiment, we were still sipping away a teeny tiny amount of current to measure the voltage but the ratio of the current flowing in the resistors to that which is taken by the meter is so huge that the error is minuscule. The 5% tolerance of these resistors creates an error that's far greater than what we see from this minuscule current flow. So most of the time we can completely ignore the input impedance of our meter. It's so high it doesn't affect anything. But there are situations where you're dealing with circuits that have very high impedances when all of a sudden you're getting close to 10 mega ohms and things start to get screwy. So that's when you really have to think about what's going on. By now it should be abundantly clear that when we're connecting stuff together, we need to understand both the output impedance and the input impedance of the devices that we connect. You'll often hear people talking like this. The impedance seen looking into the base of the transistor is X ohms. Or the impedance looking into the output is Y ohms. This is just a convenient way to describe the perspective that you're taking while analyzing the circuit. Allow me to explain. If we go back to our original voltage divider circuit with the two 10k ohm resistors, the one that was producing 5 volts, Let's look at this from a totally external perspective. Like we're just looking into the output and we're trying to describe what we see. We can't see all the complicated stuff that's going on inside the box. All we're concerned with is the single output terminal that we're presented with. What we need to do is describe what that output looks like in the simplest possible terms. Luckily, there was a French dude named Leon Charles Thévenin who in the 1880s became obsessed with simplifying circuits. His theorem basically states that any complex mess of voltage and current sources combined with resistors can be replaced with a single voltage source and a single resistance. So first, let's figure out the value of that single resistance that represents the output impedance of this circuit. The first thing we do is replace the battery with a short circuit. A theoretical perfect battery has an impedance of zero ohms, so we can just replace it with a short circuit and ignore the voltage. Now if you think about it, we're just left with a parallel combination of two resistors. In this case, they're each 10k ohms. Now if you recall, when we have resistors in parallel of equal value, their parallel value is equal to the resistance divided by the number of resistors. So in this case, 10K divided by 2 is 5,000 ohms. 
So that becomes our output impedance. So if we put the battery back in, we remember that the voltage divider created five volts. So what we see at the output is basically five volts in series with a 5,000 ohm output impedance. Now it's time to see what happens when we connect a load to our circuit. Let's define the input impedance of our load as 10k ohms. And we'll change the model of our driving circuit back to its Thévenin equivalent to simplify the analysis. We end up with a very simple two resistor series circuit. First, let's figure out the total resistance. We have a 5,000 ohm output impedance in series with a 10,000 ohm input impedance, total of 15,000 ohms. We have a voltage source of 5 volts. So first, let's calculate the current by simply dividing the voltage by the resistance. If we divide 5 volts by 15,000 ohms, we end up with a current of 0.00033 amps, or 330 microamps. So now let's figure out what the resulting voltage inside of our load actually is. If we take this current and we multiply it by the input impedance of 10,000 ohms, we come up with 3.33 volts. Back on the bench, let's try it out and see if it agrees with the theory. We got our 10 volts. We got our five in the middle of the divider. And now let's add our 10 kilo ohm load impedance and see what that does to the voltage. We see the 3.33 volts just as the math predicted. All very good. Except if we're really trying to drive a 5 volt signal into another stage, this doesn't look so good. What we need to do is raise the input impedance. So let's substitute this 10K with a 1 million ohm resistor. When we do this, you'll see that we get nearly 5 volts. It's not exactly 5 volts because we're still losing a little bit in the source impedance, but it's much better. So this would be exactly what we want to do if we're trying to drive a 5 volt signal across from one stage to another. We go low impedance into high. Let's summarize some of the concepts about interstage impedances that we've learned so far. Number one, if you're trying to transfer a voltage signal from one stage to another, you want the input impedance of the receiving end to be much, much higher than the sending end. This minimizes the voltage drops between the stages. You're always going to lose something, but it can be a very minute amount if you make the ratio of impedances high enough. Number two, if you're trying to send power from one stage to another, you need to match the impedances. You're going to run into this concept a lot when you get into RF radio frequency circuits and systems. Number three, if your signal is a current, then you want the output impedance to be high and the input impedance to be low, the inverse of the voltage situation. Now, I know a lot of this seems really abstract, but it's going to make a lot more sense as we go down the road and explore a lot more circuit configurations and concepts. So that's it for episode number four. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this. Please uh, like, subscribe, and comment your heart out below. Help this channel grow. Thank you very much.